Episode 5 of The Acolyte is out, and yes, we finally got some lightsaber action, but was this episode good or is it just another example of poor storytelling? Let's discuss. I try to be fair in all my critiques. I, like you, are a Star Wars fan. I grew up with it, and I even went as far as to make a YouTube channel about this very universe. But that doesn't mean I love everything about it. I've read books that have left me annoyed or unsatisfied. I even have my fair share of problems with certain Clone Wars episodes, not to mention some of the issues with the prequels in OT. Despite my love for those trilogies, I won't mention the sequels because that's really another story. I preface this all to try to make you understand there's aspects to Star Wars that I have problems with. But despite the issues I may have, there's nothing more I love than the universe that George Lucas created. I mean, of course, a close second would be Lord of the Rings, but that's not this channel. However, the Acolyte is in another category. I've made my thoughts apparent on episodes 1 and 2. As for 3 and 4, well, episode 3 was a train wreck of bad writing, amounting to a weak introduction of a strange witch force cult, mentally unwell children, and child kidnapping Jedi. Jedi who act uncharacteristic, although apparently some people have this false belief that Jedi just steal kids away in the night, so whatever. Episode 3 was a really good example of bad fanfiction. Episode 4 had absolutely nothing at all. Typically these shows tend to have filler episodes, and even though I dislike how that term is thrown around, I don't even think episode 4 could qualify as filler. It's that empty of substance. Instead, we have awkward dialogue between characters that barely know each other, a Sith in disguise yapping in every scene he's in, and this, Basil, whatever he is. You could say I was beyond underwhelmed when watching episode 4, it was just so unbelievably boring. But I digress. We're here to discuss episode 5. The latest installment in the Acolyte attempts to deliver spectacle by way of numerous action sequences and flashy lightsaber fights. There's also ruthless Jedi slaughter and a lazy twin trope, the likes of which I last saw in the movie, The Parent Trap. Now, sure, we have lightsaber duels, which is exciting. I'm a sucker myself for a good lightsaber duel. But where's the lightsaber combat style? Where's the skill? The Jedi swing their lightsabers like they've never held a blade before. The strikes are all over the place, and there are attacks that leave the wielder wide open. Now, please understand, is it the worst duel I've ever seen? No, there's genuinely some interesting stuff there, like the Sith armor, which I believe is called Cortosis. That's neat, but comes with its own problems, like establishing a metal that more than just this one Sith would use. Are we going to pretend like it just doesn't exist after this series? However, I should move on to the actual fights. The only time I was genuinely impressed was when Jackie, a Padawan by the way, a Padawan, put up the most aggressive assault on the Sith. That actually got my attention. That was cool. But come on, I mean, she wasn't going to survive. There's just no way. An hour ago, she was training with a wooden stick. She's not going to defeat a Sith. I will also say that the stranger, Kamir, the Sith, whatever his name may be, has great physicality and puts on a good performance. Or maybe his stunt double does. Lightsaber duels from the prequels and even Clone Wars had more style and resembled how masters of lightsaber combat would fight. That doesn't mean the prequel duels were perfect. Believe it or not, they have their own issues, but we aren't critiquing the prequels, we're discussing the Acolyte. To give some credit to the show, I think the Sith definitely proved how much of a better fighter he was than the Jedi. Not only are his attacks well coordinated, but he systematically takes them down with ease. I do however roll my eyes whenever he vanishes or runs away when he should just continue his assault and kill the character he was engaged with. It seems like they wanted to add some sort of suspense like where is he, but it really just played on the screen as being goofy. Another big issue I have from this episode is May, who last episode wanted to turn herself in, which came entirely out of nowhere. In this episode though, she attempts to run away. Maybe she just fears her Sith Master that much, who knows for sure. It drives me crazy that later she finally gets to reunite with Osha, only to knock her out and switch places with her. Why? Well, I have no idea. I literally have no idea what May's motivations are. They're whatever the writer needs them to be to move the plot along. Also, she could just flat out tell Osha her side of the story the night that they were separated, but I suppose it's not the right time in the plot for that. Then we have the Sith. I mean, we all knew it, right? No one was surprised. Like, clearly it was this guy. Credit to the actor, he's doing a decent job being a Jedi-hating villain, but boy is his writing weak. This Sith, who wants to remain hidden from the Jedi, consistently leaves Jedi alive. Like Yord, for example. The Sith slashes his leg and then chases after Osha. 
who shot him with a stun blast. Not only would this not have played out, but he could have easily grabbed her with the force and killed Yord. This whole chase through the jungle was really annoying. It wasn't creative. They used the only animal they encountered, that being the moth thing, which was again such an obvious move. The way they spoon feed us everything through exposition and heavy handed dialogue is kind of crazy. Not to mention the overt foreshadowing. But let's backtrack to the Sith's motivations and how the events played out. May betrayed him, so he untied himself from her trap, beats her to Kelnaka's place, and kills him. Then he lets May discover the body, floats down, and attacks the Jedi with the most obvious Sith coated weapon. Side note the Jedi somehow have no idea who a dark side red lightsaber wielding bad guy could be. None of them know their own history, none of them know about the Sith. He literally has to spell it out to Sol, who is, might I remind you, a Jedi Master. Someone who actively trains younglings and has had at least two Padawans. Anyways, the Sith could have easily killed Mei as soon as she walked into Kelnaka's, or even knocked her out. He could have easily kidnapped Osha if he wanted her to be his new acolyte. You're telling me he couldn't even plan that far ahead. His plan was, well I guess Mei's exposed me even though she doesn't know my identity. Time to kill everyone with my lightsaber. A weapon that was historically only used by the Jedi or Sith. If he would have just left the planet, May would have been arrested, put through a Jedi or a Republic trial, and found guilty. Any story she would have about some mysterious Sith Master would have easily been brushed off by the Jedi, who believe them to be extinct. If I have to cope, my only rationale behind his actions is that he's most likely a Sith apprentice, attempting to build up his own acolyte to eventually overthrow his Sith Master. That could very well be his plan, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was just killed off at the end of this story, either by Mei and Osha, or his own Sith Master. The latter being the only option I truly want. For Mei and Osha to survive this show would be an absolutely stupid mistake. This episode really just... well, it's obvious that it's meant to be flashy and cool. I have already seen many people coming to the defense of it saying, yeah, but the choreography was dope except it really pales in comparison to the legendary fights we've had in the prequels, OT, and even the Old Republic cinematics, which are some of the best. What truly makes fights special is the context or emotional stake involved. Slaughtering Jedi that we don't know, and Jedi that they've failed to get us attached to, doesn't do much. It's just a, look how cool this Darksider is, stabbing Jedi and cutting off their heads and, well, breaking necks. Also, I love the headbutting the lightsaber without any explanation. Even a throwaway line of, his armor is made of cortosis, would have been better than what we got. Because now you have people yelling at others for not knowing what cortosis is, as if somehow knowing about it makes it make more sense. Again, do you realize why introducing a metal like this with zero explanation affects the entire universe? I feel like complimenting this episode for its fight scenes gives the show too much credit, especially for how bad everything else is. The logic of the battle, the conversations characters are having, and the motivations behind the Sith are just wacky, and take away from the actual duel between the Jedi and Sith. The sad reality of the Acolyte is the majority of the fanbase just flat out rejects it. Not only is that clear from the reviews, but just look at the conversations surrounding the show. Instead of crafting theories and discussing the possible connections to characters from Legends, most people are just laughing at the show. To me, that's the clearest indicator that the show is a failure. It doesn't submerge the fanbase in the universe of Star Wars. Instead, it mocks the very universe it's trying to tell a story in. Shows like The Mandalorian were new and creative. It genuinely excited us. Ahsoka gave us interesting new characters, despite maybe not portraying fan favorites in the best way. And Andor, well, Andor, I didn't give it enough credit because wow, is the show well-crafted. It just unfortunately didn't have enough eyes watching it or Star Wars flair. My point is that if the Acolyte was inspired and creative, not to mention just well written, fans would respond in kind. But the show just isn't that. I don't know guys, maybe I'm being too harsh, you let me know. I really did root for this show before it came out, and have ultimately been disappointed from episode 1. Make sure to give me your thoughts down in the comments, blast a like if you enjoyed the discussion, and subscribe to the channel if you feel like it. Have an amazing day or night wherever you are in the galaxy, and may the Force be with you.